Hey everybody, it's Michael. I'm back again with another one of my walkthrough videos and today I want to show you La Isla. La Isla is the newest game from Stefan Feld, published by Alea Spiel and Ravensburger and as always with Alea this version is English, German and French. The game itself is language independent and the rules and the reference sheets are in all three languages. The game is number 10 in the Alia Media Box series and is for 2 to 4 players, ages 10 and up, and plays in about 45 to 60 minutes. And also, it has a complexity printed on the box of 3 out of 10. So, what's it all about? Well, thematically, we're on an undiscovered island, La Isla, where there's lots of rare and believed to be extinct animals, and we are researchers. Although in the game they're called explorers, but I guess researchers would be the better translation because we're not trying to explore the island, we're trying to capture these animals and well, perform research on them. And whoever does that best will be the winner. Mechanically you capture these animals by surrounding them with your explorers on the island. But the most interesting mechanic in this game is once again how cards are used. The game uses multi-purpose cards, where each card can be used for three different purposes. You can either get resources or perform research on an animal or get a special ability. Every round you get three cards and you have to use exactly one card for each of the three different purposes. So one of those cards has to be used for the special ability, one to get your resources and one to perform research on an animal. So basically every turn you're looking at the six different permutations of how to sign these cards and you have to make the best of it. But I'll talk a little bit more about this at the end of the video. For now let me show you a full three-player game. Have fun! Okay, I've set up a three-player game and as always let's have a brief look at the components first. Starting with the main game board in the middle. The game board is made out of ten oddly shaped tiles placed around the center tile randomly and also 35 animal tokens, seven of each of the five different kinds, placed randomly on all these dark green jungle spaces. Also on the game board we have these terrain spaces and these come in five different kinds. Desert, grassland, mountains, plains and swamps. And you can capture an animal in a jungle if you place one of your explorers, and I'll come to those in a second, on all the surrounding terrain tiles. So for example, this animal down here is on a space with fours, meaning that there are four adjacent terrain spaces, these four, and you have to place an explorer on all of them to capture it. On the other hand, this only shows a two, because there are only two surrounding terrains. Then over here we have the scoreboard, where each player starts with an explorer on the zero space, and also we have five tracks, one for each of the different kinds of animals. And I'd like to think of these scores as the knowledge that the players collectively gather about the different animal types. So during the game these markers will advance and at the end of the game for each animal that you have captured you take a look in which section the marker is and you score that many points per animal. So for example if this marker would be up here at the end of the game and you'd have four of these red kind of things then you'd score 16 points. Also, these numbers serve as the game end timer because at the end of each round we add up all the numbers of the sections that the markers have reached and if the sum is equal or greater to 9, because we're playing a 3 player game, then the game will be over. Then down here we have a reference card with a front and a back placed side to side, which will explain us how a turn works and also the many different special abilities and also final scoring. Let's take a look for a moment. Each two cubes that you still have left are worth one point. Each set of five different animals is worth ten points. And then you score the animals according to the scoreboard, as I just mentioned. And as you can see, we have a trade-off, because if a certain marker for an animal is very high, then you want to have many of that kind of animal. But on the other hand, you're rewarded if you collect sets of different animals. Then over here we have a supply of five different cubes. They correspond to the different terrain tiles and they represent basically the equipment or the supplies that you need to explore in that terrain. Then we have a couple of extra explorers for each of the players and then we have a huge deck of cards. These cards come in two categories. We have twos and ones and the rules suggest that for the first couple of games until everybody is familiar with the game you only play with the ones and there are 120 cards and then after a while you can play the game as it's supposed to be with twos added in and this is what I've done so we have 180 cards and then we have the possessions of the different players for example the blue player 
He's the starting player. Each player has this card holder where you, on the one hand, play the cards that you selected face down in the different phases of the game, but also you have these slots where you can put in the cards that you want to use for their special ability. Then each player has five of their explorers, one each of the five different types of cubes, and then everybody starts with a big animal counter, randomly, of one of the five kinds. And for all intents and purposes, this big counter counts as two normal counters. And this is basically just a way of giving the players a more unique starting condition. So the blue player has this Sardinian Pika, the white player has the Moth, and the red player has the Fossa. And while we're at it, the blue tokens are Dodos, and the orange tokens are Golden Toads. And then we're ready to start the game. The game is played over a number of rounds until it ends by getting the markers high enough so the bonus points equal nine or more. And each round is split into two phases. First we have a card phase and then we have action phases. In the card phase, every player receives three cards. They look at them in secret and then they place them face down next to the slots for A, B and D, corresponding to which parts of the cards they want to use in which of the three phases. Let's take a look at this now. These are the three cards that Blue got. Now the card that we put into the A slot, we will actually put into our card holder. And from now on, we can use its special ability until we decide to replace it. And the special abilities that we have, whenever we receive a white or natural colored cube, we get an additional one. Whenever we place an explorer on a space with a hat, then we get an additional resource anyone and finally whenever we capture one of those golden toads we can additionally advance one of the markers so this is the special ability now the card that we place into slot b is discarded and we get the resource in the bottom left so we can either get a natural colored resource or a brown one and we already see a combo if this were to be our special ability and this were the resource we're getting then we would be getting two and then finally for slot number d we look at the bottom right the card will be discarded and the animal would be advanced by one on the score track and then we'd score one point for each of the animal tokens of that kind that we already have. Thematically speaking, we're researching that kind of animal and if we actually have one of those specimen, then give us points. Let's actually do the following. So we use this as a special ability. Then get a cube making use of the special ability and then advance the Pika marker. And now, since everybody has assigned their cards, we can now move into phase two, performing the actions. Phases A, B and D can be performed simultaneously, but phase C, placing the explorers, has to be performed in player order. So to re reduce the time of switching between players and showing what they're doing, I will do the following. Since blue is the start player, I will first show you A and B for red, then A and B for white, then A through D for blue, then C and D for red, and C and D for white. So the red player, his special ability, whenever he places an explorer on the inner ring of terrain spaces, he gets an additional two points. So this is put into his card holder. Then he gets a gray cube and this card is discarded. Then it's a white player. His special ability will be whenever he captures one of those Pikas, he will get an additional resource. And then he gets a green cube. Now blue gets the special ability. Gets a natural color cube, special ability triggers, so he actually gets two. Then in phase C, you place one of your explorers on a terrain space and you have to pay two of the resources corresponding to that terrain space. Now the only terrain space that we can actually put our explorer on is a white one. So we give up two of these and we decide to put him here because this is a chase to two more of those Pikas, which we're already invested in and also we can get to other kinds of animals so we can start on the set building. And then finally we reveal our D card with a picker. So this is moved up once and then we get one point for each of the, our pickers. We have two, so we get two points. Then it's phase C for the red player. He can place on a gray terrain. Since he gets bonus points for placing on the inner ring, he chooses this space. He doesn't capture any animals yet because he hasn't surrounded one animal completely, but he also gets two points. And then his D, so it is advanced, but he doesn't get any points. And finally white places on a green space, this one over here, he doesn't capture anything yet. And then he advances the moth, so he gets two points. And that's already the end of the first round. So he advances start player marker over to here, 
and everybody gets three cards again and starts planning. These are Blue's cards. You either get a grey, yellow or natural colored cube, which would tie in with our special ability. We can't advance our quote-unquote animal. Special abilities are either getting an additional brown cube or an additional green cube, or whenever we're placing an explorer on our space with a canteen, then we get an additional three points. Now we could take another white one, which would get a, give us two, and then place an explorer over here, working on these two areas. Then we would have to take either of those as our special ability, and no matter which one we pick, it won't help us this turn. On the other hand, we could take a yellow cube, use this as a special ability, place over here, get the three bonus points, and then advance Dodos, and we chase one here, and we would be adjacent here and here. So let's give that one a try. Let's look at white first. White's new special ability will be that you can treat brown cubes as wilds. If you have a free space, you have to use it. Once all three slots are full, then you can start replacing things. Then he gets a brown cube, so he now has two. Then it's over to us. This is our new special ability, and we collect a yellow cube, then it's red. Red's new special ability is that this card gets placed over here, and now he has a fourth slot where he can put cards in. Then he takes a green cube, spends the green cubes, places an explorer on this space, and since it's in the inner ring, he first scores two points. But then he can also capture this orange toad, because now it's completely surrounded by his explorers. So it's put in his supply. Whenever you capture an animal, you score the number of points that it took explorers to surround. So in this case, another two. And then finally, forces are removed by one, so he score another two points. White pays two brown cubes to place an explorer over here, so he can capture this moth. He'll score two points. None of his special abilities have triggered. Moth will get advanced by one. And he'll score three points. Now it's our turn. We play two yellow. Put an explorer up here. We don't capture anything. But the special ability triggers, so we get three points. And then we advance Dodos. But don't get any points. Then it's the end of the round. The sum of all the bonuses is still zero. Zero is obviously less than nine. And so we advance a new round where white will be the starting player. And these are blue's cards. When placing an explorer onto a mountain region, he can advance a marker and get points. When placing an explorer with a backpack, he can advance a marker. Or whenever you choose a moth in phase D, you get two points. Now this one is not very interesting because we're not really going for moth right now. The one with the backpack, we're already at one backpack, but for example, this one would be interesting. Things that is a green one, and while we have one green cube, we can't get another one, so we wouldn't be able to use it this round anyway. Let's use this one for the special ability, this one for the resource, so our special ability triggers, and then we'll advance Dodos, because we're about to get one very soon. And let's actually start with us. So, special ability, then we get two white resources, then red. You can now, once per round, I didn't mention that earlier, use a white cube as any cube. And he takes a white cube. White. Whenever he captures a moth, he gets three points. He takes a gray cube. Then he spends his gray cubes to place an explorer over here. No special ability triggers. And he doesn't capture anything. And then he advances the Pika by one. But he doesn't get any points. Blue spends two white cubes, places an explorer here. No special ability triggers, but he kept just a doodle, so I get two points. And then we advance dodos and get one point. And finally, red spends two white cubes to also place an explorer in here. That is not a problem. There can be an unlimited amount of explorers in the same space, but only one per player. For that placement, he gets two points, and another two for capturing the moth. And then he advances the toad by one, so he gets one point. 
Let's end the round. So blue is the starting player again. This is what blue has. First of all, the purple section doesn't look too good because we've only the moth and the fossa and this is what the other players are invested in. Now for our special abilities we get a bonus when placing on a space with the canteen and also on a mountain. And the space that has both is down here and we could work on surrounding that moth. For that we would need grey. We have one and these two offer us grey. So let's take one of these two as our B action and then now we only have to decide on the special ability. Green would maybe be nice for here later on. This one will reduce the costs for placing on a hat by one and this one will allow us to advance a marker when placing with a tent. Now there's a tent over here but oh there's two hats over here. So let's use this one for the special ability. Then we need a grey and so this will be our D. Red gets another explorer as a special ability. And he will keep that explorer even if this card is covered up. Then he gets a green. White can save a cube whenever he places where another explorer already is. Now since all of the slots are full he has to replace one of the special abilities. He can't just discard this one. So he decides to remove this one. And then he gets a grey cube. Blue decides to replace the special ability and gets a grey cube. Then pays two. Puts an explorer over here. Doesn't capture anything yet but gets three points. He can also at once one marker and he decides to choose the pickers because then he gets another two points. And finally we have the moth. Red can't place an explorer so he just decides to take a brown cube. Fossas are advanced and he gets two points. White Places an explorer here, and since there are already others, he only has to pay one white cube, thanks to a special ability. So he captures a moth and gets three points, plus another three. And then moth are once per one, so he gets another four points. So I was wrong, of course, when blue placed here, he actually captured this Pika. So he gets another three points for capturing it. And also, since he showed a Pika card, and now it's one more, it should actually be like this. Then it's the end of the round. The sum of the markers is one, so still a little bit away from nine. And now the red player is the star player. And from now on I won't show you the blue player's planning any longer. White. Now has a new special ability that he gets four cards per round and he can choose three of those. So this is very powerful. He has to decide which card has to go. And since he has already enough moth, he decides to let this one go. Then he gets a yellow cube. Blue can now, whenever he places an explorer on a head space, advance a marker. So this is a nice combo with this one. So he decides to get rid of the canteen. Then he takes a green cube. Red, thanks to his fourth slot, doesn't have to remove anything yet. So this can go on here. He takes a brown cube. Decides to pay two. Place an explorer here. So first that's two points for placing on the inner ring. Second he captures the dodo for a total of four points. And finally, Fossas moved up one. So he gets another two points. White pays two yellow cubes and then place his explorer here so he can capture both the dodo and the pika for a total of six points. Then the special ability triggers and decides to take a gray cube. And finally pikas are moved up by one so he gets another point. Blue places an explorer over here. It's a space with a hat. So he only has to pay one cube. Then he can advance a marker. He decides to advance Pikas, so he'll get three points. And then Moth are advanced, but he doesn't get points. Now it's the end of the round. Sum is two. And White will beat the new star player. Also, thanks to a special ability, White gets four cards now. Blue gets a new special ability. Whenever he would advance the dodo, he can advance something else instead. He decides to replace this one, so he still has the head combo. Then he gets a green one. The red player 
gets yet another explorer. And there's a rule that you can never have the same special ability showing more than once in your card holder. But if he replaces this one and it keeps its effect with this one, then that should be legal if I'm not entirely mistaken. So he gets his last explorer. Then he gets a green cube. White gets a new special ability. He decides to remove this one. Then he takes a white cube, so that immediately triggers. Now he doesn't have any explorers in the reserve anymore, so he has to move one of the explorers that is already on the board. And this one seems pretty destined for that because he no longer can capture any animals. And he decides to enter into some friendly competition with the blue player, so he moves over here. So he only has to pay one white cube. Then the toad is spawns by one, doesn't give him any points. And his fourth card was just discarded without effect. He pays only one green cube, since he intends to move on a space with a hat. This explorer is useless over here, so he can move over here. Then he gets advanced marker. He decides to take Pika, so he gets three points. And then he would have a Dodo, but he decides to take Pika instead, so that's another three points. He spends two, puts an explorer, and yes, he still has plenty over here. And then finally, force us at once by one, so he gets two points. Then it's the end of the round, and currently we are looking at four. Red replaces this ability up here, he already has the explorer. Then he takes a yellow cube, so this ability triggers. And he decides to move the fossa up one. So he gets two points. White gets a new special ability. He decides to replace this one. Then he gets a green cube. Blue replaces this one up here. Takes a grey cube. Now he sees that the white player has two grey cubes. He'll probably move in here and capture both these animals. However, at least with the moth, the blue player can come first if he decides to move this one, and that's exactly what he does. So he moves over here. There's a space with a hat. So he only has to pay one. He has to advance. So he decides to advance Pikas. So he gets three points. Then he captures the moth and gets two. And finally, Dorus advanced by one, so he gets another point. Red pays to yellow, puts an explorer here, so he gets his usual two points for the inner ring, plus he captures his Pika. He now has one set of everything, so that'll be ten points at the end of the game. And then he advances the moth, so that's one point. White pays one grey cube, since he intends to move to a space where somebody else already is. Besides move this explorer, although his work isn't done yet. And then he can capture the dodo for four points. And then Moth advance once more, so he gets another four points. At the end of the round, we are looking at a sum of five, so we are still going on. And red will be the new starting player. White gets an additional card slot and a green cube. Blue decides to remove the special ability and instead get this one. Then he gets a brown cube. Red decides to play, replace the one with the inner ring. Gets a yellow cube. Special ability triggers. He decides to advance the forces. He's unable to place an explorer, so he decides to take a yellow cube. And then he advances the toad, so it gives him one point plus additional two. White pays two green cubes, takes one explorer, moves him over here. Since this is the space of the canteen, the special ability triggers. He decides to advance the moth, 
So that's the usual four points. And another four points. Blue uses his special ability to treat one brown cube as any other. Paste these two as two whites. And, well, both of these are still situated very well, but this is too good to give up, so this one moves over here. So he captures both the moth and the pika for a total of six points. And then he has a toad, which gives him nothing. And at the end of the round, we are looking at a sum of six. And white is the starting player. Blue also gets the chance to draw a fourth card, although it's later in the game. So let's see how useful this will still become. This card is removed. And then he takes a yellow cube. Red decides to remove this card. And then takes brown cube. White places this card in his new card slot. Then he gets a yellow cube. Then he decides not to place an explorer and takes another yellow cube. And finally he scores Moth again for the usual four points. Blue decides to move this explorer up here. It's a space with a hat. So it only costs him one yellow cube. He also gets to advance a marker. He decides to take the Picas again for four. And finally, Forza has moved up one. Red pays to yellow. Plays this last explorer over here. Since this is based with a backpack, he gets a cube of his choice. He decides to take a gray one. Then he captures the toad for three. And then he advances the toad. So he now gets a total of four points. And it's the end of the round, and we're looking at two, three, six, eight. So this round will probably be the last. And the blue player will start us off. Red replaces this ability. And gets a gray cube. White decides to replace this ability. So now he has three different bonuses that trigger whenever he moves where somebody else already is. And then he takes a yellow cube. Blue. Replaces this one. Now he'll get two points whenever he places somebody on the outer ring. Then he gets a yellow cube. Then he pays two green. Moves this explorer over here. So he captures the dodo for three. And then he advances dodos for two points. Plus, they're now also worth one point at the end of the game. Red pays two gray cubes, moves this explorer over here. First, he puts an explorer on a tent, so that's three points. Then he captures the frog for another three. And then Fossas are advanced for another two. White moves his explorer over here, so he moves where somebody else already is, so it only costs him one cube. He gets two points immediately. He would also be able to replace one cube with another, but that's not necessary. He captures the fossa, so we're looking at four points altogether. And then dodos are advanced, so he gets two points. Then it's the end of the round. The sum of the markers is 2, 3, 4, 7, 9. So the end game is triggered and the game is immediately over. Before the final scoring, white has 50 points, red has 48 and blue has 47. Then everybody gets one point for each of their two remaining cubes. So white gets two points. Blue gets nothing and red gets one. Then for a set of all five animals, a player will get 10 points. White doesn't have a full set, blue doesn't have a full set, red does, so he gets 10 points. And then each player scores the animals according to the multipliers. Pikas are worth 2, 
So white will score two points. Blue scores eight. And red scores two. Dodos are worth one point. White scores two points. Blue scores two points. Red scores one point. Toads are worth one point, so red scores three. Moths are worth three points, so white scores twelve. Blue scores six. And red scores three. And then the fourth house are worth two. So white gets another two. And red gets another four. Making him the overall winner at 72 points. White has 70 and blue has 63. And that was one full three-player game of La Isla. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough of La Isla. And once again, I hope you could see how the game plays that the rules are not too difficult, that it's actually easy to get to play. The challenge is, of course, in how to use the three cards you're given every round. And in this game, the key is flexibility. If you dealt a crappy hand of cards, you have to make the best of it. If you have a great special ability from one of the previous turns, and you now get cards that don't allow you to benefit from this special ability, well, there's nothing you can do. Also, speaking about special abilities, even if you've got the greatest two or three card combo, it won't be for long because you have to replace these cards at one point or the other. You also have to be flexible what to do with your explorers, especially if you only have five of them, because at some point you have to start moving them. If there's one that is no longer useful where he is, then great, move that one. But it might be that you have to give up another opportunity just to be able to use another one. Then of course there's the trade-off between collecting many animals of the same kind versus collecting sets because sets give you a huge bonus, but many of the same kind can also give you huge bonuses if you can advance the marker high enough. With markers you have to be careful not to advance those that will benefit your opponents most. Also you have to be careful, or maybe you can do this on purpose, because advancing the markers of course also moves you faster to the end game, especially if you move up those markers that are already high, because intervals get smaller and smaller. And finally, there's the random setup. Basically everything is random, the way the island is built, the way the animals are placed on it, and also the cards you're getting. So basically, each game will definitely feel different than any other one. But once again, you have to be flexible, you have to take a look at the island, see whether there are some areas where you could benefit, where you can string together some combos, either with the terrain or with the special symbols on the terrain, and, well, then try to go for it, but if it doesn't work, you have to come up with another plan. And while you're arranging those cards and try to figure out which would be the best combination to put them, you also have to pay attention to what your opponents are doing, and I guess that's already it. So, once again, thanks for watching, have fun playing, and until next time. Bye-bye!